M1 iPad Pro versus A14 iPad Air, which is the best latest generation iPad for you. And yeah, sure, fine. We'll toss the A12 iPad 8 in there as well. Let's do this. Sponsored by Ting. I'm comparing all the Apple products so you can figure out how to best save and spend your hard earned money. So hit that subscribe button and bell and we can build the best community in tech together. The 11 inch iPad Pro, the iPad Air, hell, even the eighth generation iPad non-pro, non-air, the iPad nothing, are all around the exact same physical size, same height, same width, almost the same depth and weight. The iPad nothing is just ever so slightly thicker and heavier because it lacks a laminated display and other sveltifying features, but they're all very close to just exactly the same size. Where the differences come in is one, yes, colors. You may care desperately about that or not at all, but you can get the iPad Air in silver, space gray, rose gold, mint green, or sky blue. Even the iPad 8 in silver, space gray, or rose gold. The iPad Pro though, that's only silver and space gray because pros just simply cannot have any fun. The other difference is the display. The 11 inch iPad Pro is 11 inches, obviously. The iPad Air is 10.9 inches because while Apple Thanos snapped fully half the bezels off the Pro, the only kind of Thanos flicked a quarter of them off the Air and none at all off the iPad 8. That's only got a 10.2 inch display and it's not even laminated. So there's an air gap under the glass, which can lead to more reflections and more glare. It's also not P3 wide gamut like the Pro or the Air, which gives them cinematic color, richer reds and more vibrant greens. Those iPads also have true tone, dynamic color temperature matching. So whites don't look too yellow or too blue, but more properly paper white. The iPad Pro display is brighter, 600 nits instead of 500 nits. And it's also promotion, which means it can ramp up to 120 Hertz for buttery smooth scrolling and pencil action, but also ramped down to 48 Hertz for 24 frames per second movies like nature and yes, Hollywood intended. Even 24 Hertz for static images to save on battery life. Now, if you want a bigger iPad, you still have the choice to go to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That even has a mini LED XDR display, which can peak at 1600 nits for full on, full high dynamic range content. But otherwise, if traditional iPad size is the size you want and the display really, really matters to you, the 11 inch iPad Pro is the one for you. If you want good, but don't need extra, the iPad Air is terrific. Otherwise, if price is just way more important to you than the display, the iPad 8 has one. The iPad Air has an A14 Bionic system on a chip, same chip that's in the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro. It's Apple's 11th generation custom silicon, the same generation that's in the new iPad Pro's M1. Yes, the Apple Silicon Mac chip is also now in the iPad Pro. Think of it as like an A14X Plus, same efficiency and performance cores, same graphics cores, same neural engine cores. So core for core, the Air is just as fast for example, for launching apps, rendering web pages, all of that. The Pro just has more performance and more graphics cores for heavier multi-core workloads. Video, audio, photography with lots of filters, 3D, augmented reality. If you need it, you probably already know it. On the flip side, the iPad 8 is on the A12 Bionic, two-year-old architecture at this point, but still like 70% as fast core for core. Now, because it's older, it won't get iPad OS updates for as long as the new ones will, two to three years instead of four to five or more for the iPad Pro or the iPad Air. And the other major difference is RAM, where the iPad 8 is more like the iPad 3, as in three gigabytes in this regard, and the iPad Air is slightly better at four gigabytes. The iPad Pro is just a massive, massive escalation at eight or 16 gigabytes. And because unlike macOS, iPadOS has no concept of swap and just jettisons apps from memory when it runs low, the iPad Pro can keep so, so many more apps in memory, even big apps, like days of them, it feels like. So if you want the latest, greatest, most extra chip Apple has ever put in an iPad and all the RAM to go with it, then you want the iPad Pro. If you want the best, but you don't need all the extra rest, the iPad Pro will still absolutely do you. And if the only chips you really care about are potato and corn, then the iPad 8 is still faster than anything else in its class. The other advantage of M1 is that it has Thunderbolt controllers on board. And that means the M1 iPad Pro has a Thunderbolt 3 port, so it can connect to the fastest SSD drives and bigger displays. The iPad Air has USB-C, just no Thunderbolt 3, 
which means the same plug but slower speeds because what good are standards if they don't cause a lot of confusion? The iPad 8 still has lightning. So while you don't get all the PC accessories, you do get most of the iPhone ones. Both the iPad Pro and the iPad Air also have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0, while the iPad 8 is stuck at Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.3. But where the iPad Air and iPad 8 have optional 4G LTE networking, the iPad Pro goes all the way to 5G, both FR1 low and mid bands and FR2 high band, AKA millimeter wave. So if you wanna move data as fast as iPadably possible, or you just want Thunderbolt and a Qualcomm modem, then you want the iPad Pro. Otherwise the iPad Air and iPad 8 are still fine. In terms of battery life, all the iPads are all the same, pretty much always. Apple pegged iPad battery life at eight hours back in the day and every advance in efficiency they've ever made since is just used to add new features rather than increased battery life. So you'll be able to use them all for approximately the same amount of time. Just be able to do more with the iPad Pro than you will the iPad Air or you know, absolutely the iPad 8 in that time. The iPad Pro and the iPad Air have pretty much the same main wide angle camera systems. The iPad Pro also has a second ultra wide angle camera and a LiDAR sensor though it doesn't hook the LiDAR sensor into any of the camera system the way the iPhone does, at least not yet. They both also have the same image signal processor for smart HDR, the same one that's in the iPhone 12, which handles just all the photo and video stacking, which means you get the best exposed, widest dynamic range, most color balanced content possible. The iPad 8 has a much smaller wide angle camera, an older image signal processor, all of which is okay for taking photos for your report or scanning documents for your expenses, but nothing you'd really want to depend on if photography is important to you. For that, you're gonna to wanna to go with the Air, or if you want the best camera system currently on an iPad, even if it's not yet all that it can be, you're gonna to wanna to go with the Pro. And yes, that includes the front-facing camera, which is ultra wide angle now on the Pro, but with a twist, a center stage twist, which crops and zooms, pans and scans to keep you in frame and then moves with you if you get up or walk around or if your family, friends or team members join you on the call. The iPad Pro also has four speakers that maintain stereo sound no matter which way you rotate the iPad. The iPad Air has two speakers, but in landscape mode for just a much better video watching experience. The iPad 8 has two speakers in portrait. Likewise, the iPad Pro has five microphones for close to what I'd say is average USB podcast mic quality that you can use in a pinch. The iPad Air and iPad 8 only have dual microphones. So if video conferencing or on the go video recording is really important to you, you'll wanna go with the iPad Pro there as well. The iPad Pro's camera system also includes Face ID, Apple's biometric facial geometry scanner. It works if you're wearing gloves or if your hands are often wet or moist because of work, but you can only register one face at a time. The iPad Air and iPad 8 both have Touch ID, Apple's fingerprint identity scanner. The iPad Air has it in the new power button, the iPad 8 in the old home button. And it works if you're wearing a mask and you can register up to five fingers so it can work for a family, even a team at work. So if you prefer Face ID, you're gonna to need to go with the iPad Pro. But if Touch ID is your thing, you could go with the iPad Air or the iPad 8. The iPad Pro and the iPad Air both work with Apple's second generation pencil, the one that attaches magnetically and charges inductively right along the top. Also the Magic Keyboard with built-in trackpad which is expensive, but very good. The iPad 8 works with the OG first generation pencil, which charges via inverse lightning connector, or if you just shove it tail first into the port. It also only works with the smart keyboard, which has no trackpad and hence no magic. So it should be wicked obvious by now that the iPad Pro is just next level, like next, next level. But that's true for both the features and the pricing. It starts at 799 for 128 gigabytes and goes to 1899 for two terabytes or $200 more if you want the 5G option. The iPad Air starts at 599, but only for 64 gigabytes. And the only other option is 749 for 256 gigabytes, but you only have to add $130 more for the LTE. The iPad 8 starts at 329 for the bare bones 32 gigabyte model or 429 for the slightly less bare 128 gigabytes, same $130 charge for the LTE. So if you really think you need the absolute latest and greatest and money is just no object, you'll need the iPad Pro. If you want almost all of its features, all the mainstream features, and don't need just the bells and high-end whistles, and the storage is enough for you, you can go with the iPad Air and save a couple hundred bucks. If money is the deal breaker object, and the specs don't really matter to you, you can save a bunch of cash 
even with limited capacity with the iPad 8. And yes, you can sometimes find sales from retailers not named Apple, but if you really need to save up, start with your cell phone bill and Ting. They have the scorching hot new deal, Set 12, that gives you 12 gigabytes of data with unlimited talk and text for just $35 a month. And you can even get unlimited for $45 a month. Whatever you need, just go to renee.ting.com, check out the plans and see how much you can save because it could be a lot. Plus you get access to the best nationwide coverage in America on pretty much any phone from the latest iPhone 12 to all the Galaxy flips and folds and the upcoming pixels. Just keep your existing phone, keep your existing number if you want to as well because the next generation of Ting Mobile is here. So to see how much you could save and, and to get $25 off, just click on the link below or go to renee.ting.com to get that $25 off. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. I've got full reviews for you on both the new iPad Pro and iPad Air. All the details, all in depth, so you can really decide which is right for you. So just hit the playlist up top and I'll see you in the next video.